Okay, so Ross chapter 19. I've got my answer key here, and I've got the uh, Ross page right here. We can take a look at translation. Uh, if there's also anything from the A section, we can also take a quick look at any of those things as well. So, uh, what questions do you have here? Yes, Camille. So on the B section? Yeah, yeah. The one with like phrase, phrase here, and then like then the answer key says phrase and you play. Uh-huh. Yeah. In Hebrew, I'm pretty sure it's like identical, like other words. It is uh you you could do it either way. Yeah. So let let's look at number four real quickly just to make sure that we all are literally and metaphorically on the same page here. So <laughs> number four. Why don't you repeat after me, okay? Yarenu. Yarenu. Yer Yer All right, so there, there's number four there. So the first thing is the verb, which is Yarenu. And what are the root letters here? Do we see any identifiable root letters? The first three. The first three. Are you sure that this isn't a prefix yod, Kyle? No. Not a nutty prefix? It doesn't have here. here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So not a prefix yod, but that root one, that yod is a root one yod. So very good. So one, two, and three. That means I have nu on the back end, and this is what conjugation and what person gender number? Cal perfect. Yes, so it's the cal perfect. And which person gender number is that when you have nu? One CP. Very good. With uh, those three root letters. And uh, what does yare mean? To what? To fear or to be afraid. Both of those are, are acceptable. And uh, can I translate the cal perfect of a state of verb with past time semantics? Can I say something like we were afraid? Mm hmm I can, right? I can. Can I translate the cal perfect of state of verbs with present time semantics? Can I say we are afraid? I can. I can. State of verbs in the perfect could be present or past. Okay? So just be aware of that. So you could this could be I we we are afraid or we were afraid. And then your agudola is a Word here that is what what part of speech or word class? Is this a noun, adjective, verb, pronoun? What is this? Your ah. It's a noun. Okay. Now it does sort of look like the verb yare, doesn't it? Okay. And you might accidentally want to take that as a cal perfect third feminine singular, but if you did, you have a problem with this curic right here, wouldn't you? Because it should be ya ra ah if it's the Cal Perfect 3FS, like pa, kada, ya, ra. So that's not what we're looking at here. Uh, this is rather the noun, your, a. Uh. With that comment, say then, the noun is what gender or number? Feminine singular. And good law is what type of word? It's an adjective. And it's also feminine singular at the end. Do they share their definiteness as well? Yeah, so what kind of adjective is this? Attributive, it tells you what kind of fear, uh, what kind of fear. And what kind of fear is this? Great fear. So now here's the question. Is the saying that your good Allah is the direct object? This is the thing that we fear. We were afraid or we feared great fear. Some people are afraid of clowns. I'm afraid of great fear. Is that what this is saying? <laughs> I'm afraid of being afraid. You remember how, wh who was it? Was it Franklin Delano Roosevelt who said we have nothing to fear but fear itself? Um, is that what this is saying? Now this is, this is a different um, 
construction. This, uh, this is a situation where we need to add the preposition with. Okay, So we were afraid with great fear. And when we do that, that's telling us how we feared. Right? It's giving us the manner of our fearing. It's the, the manner of the verb. And um, that, that brings us to a very important point. Uh, nouns frequently can function as direct objects, but sometimes nouns can function adverbially. Okay? They can, nouns can sometimes do what adverbs do. And when they do, in Hebrew, they'll, they'll occur without a preposition in Hebrew, but in English, for the most part, our nouns don't function adverbially, so we have to add a preposition to do that. We have a few places where we can use a noun adverbially, like the word home. Home can be a noun, right? My home is small. My home is in Texas. But I could also say something like, he went home. And there, the noun home is functioning adverbially, isn't it? It's telling you where he went. OK, so that's an adverbial use of the noun. They, we, we, we feared with great fear means, means we feared greatly. And so that would be a perfectly good translation, Camille, either way. Absolutely, um, yes. I, I also uh, had a different translation for mm -hmm. that. Um, oh, I meant just a, kind of an option. I saw that this, our, our fear was great. I don't know if that's our fear was great. Yeah, well. We wouldn't want to go that way because if you, you're, if the way you're translating that, it sounds like our fear is the subject, right? And that's not what we have here. Um, the subject of the verb is actually the first common plural, uh, we, right? So it's, we are the ones who are undergoing this verbal action. So we need to translate that as we were afraid or we are afraid, okay? If I wanted to say our fear, I'd have to take your ah uh, and turn it into a, a form that I could add a pronominal suffix to. So if you remember, your ah uh, would have to become something like your ought, and then I add the pronominal suffix, anu, your atenu, uh, and the accent's going to be there, and that means with this open pretonic syllable, this is going to become a long A. So, year atenu. Our fear, our fear. And then you could have good Allah after that. And, that, and, that, that would then, and then good Allah would not be an attributive adjective, it would be a predicate adjective, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, Kyle. With the time thing, so for number two, we could translate that as. The vessels are full of blood as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, the vessels are full of blood or were full of blood. Cow, perfect. When you have Shurik, what's the person gender number? 3CP. 3CP, right? Remember, not MP because the perfect third person plural is always common. So, good, good. And by the way, same situation as what we saw with um, this. The word dom here is functioning adverbially to indicate with what the vessels are full or were full, right? The vessels uh, are full of blood or are filled with blood. Okay, you've got to add a preposition in English to make good sense of that. So, other questions? Could you number five? Sure, sure. Let's take a look at number five. Let me have you repeat after me. Practice reading. Kuveda ha even mehazaken. All right. So, um, the word ha even. Let, let's start there for 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 just a moment. Uh, is that a masculine or a feminine noun? Ha evan. Yeah, that's actually feminine. It does look masculine because there's zero ending here, right? But if you look at your vocab list, you will see that that's a feminine noun. What does it mean? Yeah, stone or rock. Good. Let's go with stone, the stone. 
Now I have kveda. So if Evan is feminine singular and I see kveda, that comment, say, hey, does that make you think of feminine singular? Yes. Yeah. So there's two possibilities here. Comet's hey could be a perfect 3FS kind of ending, right? Or it could just be a feminine singular ending on things like participles and adjectives. And the question here is, are we looking at a verbal form or are we looking at an adjectival form here? Now, how am I going to know? What's, what am I looking for to know whether or not this is uh, a participle or a perfect or an adjective? Let's, let's start with the perfect. If this were the cow perfect of the verb kaved, what would I need to see for vowel pointing? Hey, I need a kametz vocal shiva. Kaved becomes kavada in the cow perfect of the state of verb. Okay, kavada, kavada, right? Like pakad, pakada. Kaved, kavada, ka 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 ka, throughout. Okay, so this is not the cow perfect. It might be the cow participle. It just might be an adjective that happens to look like a cow participle. Now, if it's a cow participle, what is going to happen to my sere when I add the comete? Participles are verbal forms, so what will it do? It'll reduce. It'll reduce to a vocal shiva. So the participle would be kavada. Kavada. In fact, it would look just like the, the Cal Perfect 3FS. Uh, the adjective kaved, when it adds a comete, this becomes open and pretonic. Adjectives and nouns have to have what kind of vowel when they are open and pretonic? Long. Right, it follows the old preacher sermons are long rule. Okay, nouns and adjectives do that. Old preacher sermons are long. So, da takes the tone. I'll put that in parentheses. So that's tonic. This is open and pretonic. I've got to have a long vowel, and then open propertonic syllables like to reduce the vocal shiva, don't they? So, so this is the the uh, not the cow perfect. It's not the cow participle. It is just a feminine singular adjective of Kavet. How am I going to translate this? Heavy is or was the rock. Okay. Heavy is or was the rock. So what kind of adjective is this? It's a predicate adjective. The copula is implied here, right? So this is a predicate adjective. Heavy is or was the rock. And now I have mehazakain. What is the word that the me represents? That's the word men. It's the word men. What happened to the men? What are my two ways to see the men if I'm attaching it the Marine Corps way directly? It could be me, where the nun assimilates and becomes a doubling dot in the next consonant. Or if the consonant rejects it because it's a guttural, I could get me with no doubling dot. Okay? That's what I've got here. Why has there been no doggish forte here? Because hey is a guttural, and gutturals don't take no doggish forte from anyone, do they? Not even from the Marine Corps. All right, so may has a cane. Now, should I translate this as uh, something like a heavy is the stone from the elder? Well, in one possible world, that, that could be the case, right? Like um, hey, the elders decorated a big stone and they sent it to somebody and that somebody couldn't pick it up and he's like, oh, Evan me has again, right? The rock from the elder is heavy. I don't want those kind of rocks. Give me rocks from the kids. Okay, but, but, but probably this is the kind of men that we saw when we were looking at the comparative use of men. And when we have a comparative use of men, uh, that men's either going to mean more of some quality than someone else, or it could have the sense of it's too much of some quality for someone else. And that's the idea here.
probably the rock is too heavy for the, uh, the elder, as opposed to saying something like, the rock is heavier than the elder, which in, in a possible world, yes, we could be comparing elders and rocks and how much they weigh, but, uh, but probably it, the, the, it's too heavy for the elder. So that's the way I would go with it. Yeah. Uh, well, no, because if I wanted to say it was heavy for the elder, I would use a different preposition than the men, right? The men is what's causing me to want to rethink how to understand the sentence. It's not your standard separative use of men where it means from or away from. All right, other questions? These are fun, aren't they? You're all thinking that wasn't the word I was thinking of. I have a question for number nine. Mm -hmm. Just translating. If, so for the beginning, if you say, did God not say or didn't God say, is that kind of the same thing or no? Yeah, let's take a look at nine. So why are you, why are you um, making this a question? There, there's no question mark over here. Oh, that's it, yes. That, that there? That's an interrogative, hey? Are you sure that's not an article? Well, it wouldn't be on the end of that one. Okay, yeah. I don't have the pathoc or the doubling dot that I'm expecting, and you wouldn't put it on a low negative particle anyway, would you? So that is absolutely right. So um, let's take the interrogative, hey, off for just a minute. Okay, how would we translate this? sentence without the interrogative hey just read it from here to the end it would be uh, not not said God means God did not say some God is my subject here right so God did not say ekrot berit et ami I will make a covenant literally I will cut a covenant with my people are we sure that this isn't the direct object marker? I will cut my people with a covenant? <laughs> that would become the problem, right, is what do you do with bereath if you're taking this as the direct object? Because that is a definite noun because it's got the predominal suffix on it, okay? But, uh, but then we've got a problem with how bereath functions. So we're going to go with with. We're going to go with with for the at and take this as the direct object. Okay, so God did not say, I will cut a covenant with my people. Now let's turn it into a question. What's one way to do it? Rising intonation. God didn't say? <laughs> I will make a covenant with my people? <laughs> Actually, it was funny, when I learned Russian, we, we, we learn to ask questions with that rising intonation, and, and it's very stark, the, the way they do it in, in Russian. So in Russian, if you want to say something like, you speak Russian, statement of fact, it's, вы говорите по-русски. Make sure that intonation goes down, nice and strong. вы говорите по-русски. You speak Russian. And if we want to say, do you speak Russian? We would say, вы говорите по-русски. <laughs> And we would always laugh when we'd say that. <laughs> yeah, seriously. No, um, it, it, it's funny because when you hear Russians speaking to each other, it sounds like they're yelling at each other when they're really being very polite. <laughs> you, 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 you walk into a, a store, the clerk will look at you and say something like, <laughs> which means, what do you need? <laughs> It doesn't sound like that. It sounds like you're yelling at me. It sounds like I'm bothering you. So anyhow, um, now if we don't do the rising intonation thing, how will we say this? How will we translate it? Did. Now where are you going to put your subject? Yeah, it's going to go after did, right? Did God not say such and such? Or we could use a contraction. Didn't God say such and such? So, both. so those are both good. Okay. They are the same thing except one's a contraction. It's a simplified form. But you can use that did not uh, 
say? You could say, did not God say? Yeah, that's possible. That's possible. That sounds sort of archaic, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Or emphatic. Did not I say to you, my son? But we don't really talk that way in modern English anymore. Good question. All right. Anything else? Okay, so I have a request for number eight. Um, let's read this now together. Don't repeat after me, okay? You just start. Ready? Get set. Go. V'haya ki tichbad ha avoda uzachartem eit ha zavar ha ze. All right. So um, when I see v'haya at the beginning of a sentence, is my instinct going to be to translate that or not to translate it? Yeah, I don't really want to translate that. I want to recognize whether it's a WCI or a WCP. And what is, which one is it? Vahaya. It's a WCP. And so it, there's no nutty prefix that that vav is attached to, and there's no A-class vowel under the vav, right? That would be a WCI, so this is a WCP. And when I see a WCP form of haya, what time frame am I frequently thinking of? Future. Okay. So what, what, what comes after it is going to be something that sets the future context for me. So you know key can be translated a number of different ways, don't you? What are ways to translate key? Because is one way. It could be causal. Good. What's another way? That. Good. And then there's another way you've learned. When. We haven't really seen many of these. But here, I have a vahaya, which is usually followed by what kind of a prepositional phrase? A temporal one. One that marks some location in time. So when I see a vahaya plus a key, then I'm going to be thinking this is probably a time expression. And so I'm going to try, try when for the key and see how that works. So I don't want to translate it. Just realize that whatever this is, it's future. When tikbad ha'avoda. What's tikbad? So it's the imperfect. And there's a prefix tav, right? No ending over here on the back side. So that could be 3FS or 2MS. Okay? But look at Ha'avoda. What's that? That's feminine singular, isn't it? So if that's the subject, then it's the subject of that verb. And that verb's probably a 3FS verb, right? So when the Avoda tikbads. When the work or labor, what? Yeah. Gets heavy or is heavy. So here's the thing. Because you know that the time frame is future, you might be tempted to translate it as will be heavy. But just realize that in English, we can also use the present form of is to indicate future, future uh, scenarios as well. For example, um, I could say something like tomorrow when Bertha comes, such and such will happen, right? I'm using a present tense form for that, OK? So tomorrow, when it's raining, you need to run for the hills, OK? When it's raining, that's it is raining, OK? So even though I'm using a present tense form of is, my context has already told me that that's future, right? So don't always feel like you have to use will to, to indicate future action in English because, you know, sometimes we use present forms to do that, right? I could call someone up and say, hey, I am coming tomorrow. Doesn't I am coming mean right now? Well, contextually it does sometimes, right? 
but where the context is abundantly clearly future, I'm coming tomorrow, is future, isn't it? OK. So I would translate this as, when the work is heavy, sometime in the future, what will happen? Uzakartem. Here's um, another WCP, right? I've got my three root letters. Vav in front of root one. So there's no nutty prefix before root one. It's just, just the Vav. And then a perfect personal ending. Which person gender number is that? Tem? 2MP. So it's a Cal WCP, second masculine plural from Zakhar. What's Zakhar mean? Remember. So is this going to be a past or a future time frame? It's future, right? I started with the WCP that was future. And I'm going to continue with the WCP that's future. So you all, plural, will zahar. You will remember. And what will you remember? Hadavar haze. The word, the this. And that means this word. And that is functioning how? The at? It's marking the direct object. What kind of direct object must it be? Definite. And is that definite? Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Good. Does that help? Yes. Sir. Okay. Good. Any other questions about the translation exercises? And again, we can go back to A as well if you need to or want to. I know some of you are saying, come on, ask another question. We don't want to go to chapter 20. We're not ready. <laughs> Actually, I do have a quick question for number seven. Yes. For the Malay, can mm -hmm. it also be the participle? The yeah, yeah. So Malay could be, um, remember, state of verbs, state of verbs can have participles, and the state of uh, perfect 3MS equals the participle MS. Okay? So Malay is, could possibly, possibly be the Cal perfect 3MS or the Cal participle MS. Okay? It, it could also be an adjective. That means full. All right? So, so there's actually three possibilities with this one as well. Um, let, let's do take a quick look at that. Let me get rid of some of this material here. Uh, so I have Yarethi. What does that mean? Yarethi? I feared, or I was afraid. It also could be, I am afraid. Okay. Key. Now, what's going to be the best way to translate this? So this could be giving the reason for the, for the fear. So maybe, I was afraid because malay hahekal. This is, uh, I call it masculine singular, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if these two are connected to each other, this could be the adjective masculine singular and a copula between because full was the temple, or the temple was full. Uh, this could be the cow perfect, right? And then there's no copula if this is the cow perfect, 3MS, the temple was full. And this could be the participle, the temple was full. Uh, and then kavod Adonai, or excuse me, kavod Adonai. There is a vocal shiva there. That is important because that tells us that we have to read kavod and Adonai how? As one unit because this is a construct chain. Because what normally is the vowel pointing of this word when it's not in construct state? It's kamet, it's kavod, kavod. So the reduced vowel tells me this is in the construct state. So, uh, whose glory is this? The Lord's glory, or the glory of the Lord. So, I was afraid because the temple was full or filled. Kavod Adonai. Yeah, I want to add with here, right? It's literally was filled the glory of the Lord. But you want to add with, or was full of the glory of the Lord. That would be a good reason to fear, wouldn't it? That'd be a good reason to fear. So that could be a, a causal key. Because. 
Uh, it could also, it could also be the um, the thing that you're afraid of. I was afraid that male hahikal, that the temple was full of the glory of the Lord. So that's also a possibility. All right. Anything else? Other questions? Number 10 does have an interesting expression that we should talk about for just a moment. What did you learn that the verb yakol means? Yakol. To be able. Okay, so this is the Cal Perfect 3MS. Yakol. Yakol. Um, what did you learn from your vocabulary list that yakol le plus a person attached to the lamed means? To prevail over someone, okay? It does not mean to be able to someone, okay? It means to prevail over whoever the Lamed is attached to. So if you look over here, I have Yaru Ha'anashim. Who was afraid? The men were afraid. And then I have Yer'agudullah. What does that mean? Yeah, great fear. You need to add with. The men were afraid with great fear, or were greatly afraid. Ki, because lo yachalu, they were not able. Is that how I want to translate that? They were not able to oyevehem. What's the what is the basic noun word that that this is supposed to be? What's the lexical form? It's o yave. What's an o yave? It's an enemy. So what do you see? What's attached to o yave? This is a pronominal suffix. Which one? Hem. 3MP. So who's there? Okay. Is this one or many uh, enemies? Many, and how do you know that? Because there is a yod right there. Yeah? Tells you that this noun is plural. Good. So it's their enemies. Le'oyevehem. And then yakolu le means they were, or they didn't prevail over their enemies. Okay? So... So do get that the whole expression yachalu le means, or lo yachalu uh, le, is they didn't prevail over. Okay, that whole, I guess I should change that. They didn't prevail over. Okay, and then the object of the Lamed preposition is who they didn't prevail over. Okay, so don't translate that as be able. Yes? They didn't prevail over, and you used the, they didn't overcome? Uh, yeah, overcome is a good synonym for prevailing over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not going to ask you if that makes sense, because we don't use that expression in, in English. But do you understand why that's translated that way, given the note in the vocab word section? So, uh, when we get to infinitives, that's coming in a couple of chapters. We're going to learn how to say t literally to do something. I love to eat. I'm going to drink. Um, we're going to find yakol, le, and then not a person attached to the lamed, but an infinitive. And then that will be translated as to be able to do something. Okay? So, we will, get, we will be able to, to have that that translation for Yakol a lot once we get to it, okay? But not yet. Not yet. You have to wait. All right. Any other questions about state of verbs or the translation exercises? Last call. 
take a look at number three real quickly. Just in, li in light of what we just said about Yakol, what we just said about Yakol, look at number three, Yakol Hagibor Lo. So who is doing the Yakoling here? Hagibor. So that's the subject and this is the verb. Is this the perfect or the imperfect? Does that prefix should make you think it's an imperfect? It should, at least initially, right? You see a yoda at the beginning of a verb. Maybe that's the imperfect, third masculine, singular, or plural. But if that's my nutty, imperfect, third-person prefix, and I've just got two root letters at the end, right? We don't like that, do we? We'll see that we can do that, but not yet. So that is the first root letter. So I've got all three root letters. So this is the perfect. So how would you translate just all by itself, Yakol Hagabor? The warrior is able or was able. Mm -hmm. The warrior is able or was able. Now, but I've got a lamed with a pronominal suffix here. So how shall I translate yakol? The warrior, mm, that's not negated. That low is not the low of not, but the lamed with the 3ms pronoun. Okay? So the warrior, what? Prevailed, Prevailed over who? Prevailed over a 3ms pronoun. And may you prevail over 3ms pronouns too. <laughs> All right? Prevailed over him. The warrior prevailed over him. Okay? Just to clarify, yes. we know that's not the negating that low. Yeah, so, so the, the, the low of negation is Lamed with a Aleph at the end. And sometimes it could be spelled fully with the whole and Vav, but there's still supposed to be a Lamed written. And this is just low with nothing. All right. 